everyone! In my last video I teased you with what my scope looked like. In this video I will show you everything that is on the scope. I will show you how everything is wired together and I will even explain back focus to you. Don't forget to subscribe and select the alert bell so you know when I upload new videos. And like and share with your Astro friends. You can follow me on Facebook as Amy Astro to see all my Astro adventures. Also leave me comments below, ask questions. I love to hear from everyone. Now, let's go on a scope tour. All right, so let's identify what we've got here. We've got our telescope. It's an Explorer Scientific. It is a 102 with the FCD 100 glass and it has an aperture of F7. We have a mini PC sitting here on top. This I ended up purchasing off of Amazon. It was probably in the $200 range. And the key when you choose a mini PC of, of, you know, to be on your telescope is you want it to be Windows 10 Pro. That's very important if you're going to use um, RDP to remote into it, which is RDP stands for Remote Desktop Protocol, and it comes standard on all Windows 10 Pro computers. Okay, um, let's show you what's on here. All right, this computer comes with a high-speed Ethernet port, which I use as my plan B if my router is not talking with my um, mini PC, which happens sometimes, usually when I take it away. I always carry along an Ethernet cable, and I'll run the Ethernet down to my router, which will be underneath my telescope um, under by the tripod. And then from that router, I can remote into my... Um, my PC that I'm using to capture images with. Alright, let's check out the ports on this mini PC. We've got an Ethernet port here. We've got an HDMI for when we need to hook up to a monitor. We have a USB 2 port that I am using a, um, a USB antenna with it. And the reason I'm using the antenna is that the Wi-Fi antenna that's internal to this particular computer is not strong enough for me to go from the backyard into the house for when I'm wanting to use, do some remote imaging. So I added this on there. It's, they're fairly inexpensive on Amazon and uh, that's really done the trick. I have a 12 volt power on here and if we come around to the back side, let's see if that's going to show for us here. We've got our power button and I've got two USB 3 ports. Now my USB 3, one is dedicated for my imaging camera and the other is going to a USB 3 powered hub that holds all my other items on it. So continuing down, we've got our guide scope here. This is a Stellar View 50 millimeter guide scope with a helical focuser. And on the end, I'm using a ZWO ASI 290 monochrome uh, camera to use as my guide camera. And notice this one is not cooled at all. Now this particular scope, you'll notice that <laughs> I had, it looks like it's carbon fiber matching the telescope, but really this is a vinyl wrap hiding a white telescope. And the whole, the only reason for me doing that is I just like things color coordinated when I can get away with it. And it was fairly easy to do. All right. Let's just zoom in here so you can see the camera here. The camera has two ports on it. This one here is like the telephone cable port that will go into your um, your telescope mount itself, which mine is a Skywatcher EQ6R, and it's used for guiding. But I don't use this anymore. I actually use ASCOM, and I'll show you how I can get that done also. And this is a USB 2 cable. Now I could take the cable and run it to my imaging camera, because there's a nice little extra port there available but I'm actually running this to my USB 3 hub just so I don't get any data interference with the camera itself. I've been having some guiding issues, so I'm trying to weed out where the error is in all of this. All right, so here's my imaging camera. It is a ZWO ASI 1600, monochrome pro cooled. It has two ports on the back that are USB 2. One of them is going to my filter wheel, which you'll see back here. And the other one I've got left blank, but a lot of folks will connect their guide camera up to here. Got a USB 3 port, and this port goes directly up to my computer. 
and I have a powered port here so I can get the cooling function of the fan. And I keep everything tied together in this nice little braided sheath. It just keeps things nice and organized so we don't have one of those, uh, what some people are calling an octopus nest or a rat's nest of uh, cables. I try to keep things organized if I can. All right, so you know we've got our imaging camera and this is a mono camera so I needed to have filters so I could accomplish my color. There's an LRGB, a narrowband HA, a sulfur 2, and an oxygen 3 filter in there. And the filters are from Optolong. And this happens to have seven filters in here and each filter is the 36 millimeters and they are unmounted. So they were a little tricky to get in there and to avoid all the dust bunnies and such. All right, so this is my Moonlight Night Crawler. It is a focuser and a rotator all in one. It has this really nice display screen that will show me the values of my focus and of my rotation. So I can actually repeat those numbers for the next time that I want to go out and image. And on it, it has a USB 2 port that I have wired into my hub. And then it has a power option here. Inside of this is a built-in thermometer, so you can always keep up with what the temperature, the outside is. And being a cooled camera, I can keep up with what the temperature is of my images. So the next thing we've got going on here is my USB 3 hub. It's a powered hub. It's also got a power cord here. And it's everything is getting power from... Let's zoom out so you guys can see this. There we go. Everything is getting power from this little power distribution block that I've got going on. So everything is getting wired direct from the device up here and plugging in. And they all have these plug connectors. And these are called Anderson Power Poles and they're perfect for 12 volt plugs. All right, so just to give you a rundown of what I've got going in here, I have my EQ Mod cable which this runs down to the telescope mount. And that is this connector right here that you'll see is familiar. It goes to my telescope mount. And this took place of the other cable that I would have had for my guide scope. And this is called the EQ Mod cable. All right, and then I've got my guide scope camera is running into here. And then I've got my night crawler is running into here. And outputting from all this is going directly to the mini PC. All right, I have a fairly clean rig here. The only cable that's coming off of this is my power cable. And this is a 12 gauge, 12 volt cable with the Anderson power pole. And it feeds up to this power distribution block. All right, here is my power distribution block. It's for the Anderson power poles. And I have one power feed from the ground that feeds into here and it daisy chains the power to each one of these other plugs. So I don't need multiple sources going up here. They're all handled here. And I've got an option of up to eight powered items to go here. Also going is my Astro Zap dew heater. Hey, there he is there. He's got four channels on there. Currently I am using three of the channels. One channel is being used for my guide scope. Another channel is used to put our the, the dew heater on the mains telescope. And then I've got an unusual one down here. All right, so my third one is on my image train. And the only reason that I've had to do this one lately is we're in a season that has a lot of dew. And for the first time ever, I actually had dew on my camera sensor. So I'm trying to avoid it by adding just a little bit of heat there. I keep that one on very low. All right, so what I've also got going on here is just the basic dovetail on top. And this is sole purpose is if I'm not able to plate solve for some reason and I need to do a three-star alignment, I drop my telerad on here, which is already calibrated to work with the telescope. And if I line the dovetails up, then it is already ready to go. And that's my plan B. I try to have plan Bs wherever possible and it's just easy to do. But what happened with this was this nice little happy coincidence. Let's line this up here for you. Now look down that dovetail. You'll see there's this little notch right here. Now if I'm running and I'm squatting down to about here and I'm looking through here, if I can get Polaris in that notch, then I know that I'm pretty well lined up to see it when I am trying to do polar alignment with my polar scope. 
So that was a, a nice little happy coincidence for me. All right, so coming off of the telescope, you've got this one braided cable here, and one is for my EQ mod, and the other is for powering the mount itself. So these go down to the body of the mount. This one goes down to the ground, and it goes down to a power supply. Now this is a PowerWorks power supply. It will take 120 volts in, and it will cut it down to 12 volts out. And I can take two Anderson power pole connectors here, so I could have two power sources. And there's two more plugs on the back, and this is where the AC power goes in. But let me show you this. See, I cut the, cape, the, the tape there. I have voided my warranty. And let me tell you why I voided my warranty. Okay, so the whole reason that I opened up this power supply was that it was feeding me 13.8 volts uh, when I received it from the manufacturer. And that had the potential to fry some of the devices that were up on the telescope. And I didn't want that to happen. So I opened it up on the inside and somebody was kind enough to show me where the potentiometer was on the inside. And I took a really small flathead screwdriver and I had a, a, an amp meter, a multimeter attached to those front power pole connectors there. And I dialed down the potentiometer until I reached about 12.8 volts. That way I knew everything was within reason and I wasn't worried about cooking any of the electronics. So that is something to be very, you know, leery of. You know, just keep an eye out on what you're supplying your telescope if you're feeding it off of 120 volts AC and you're dropping it down to 12 volt, even though that says it's a 12 volt power supply, chances are it's feeding you just a little bit more, and that's completely within industry tolerance for these um, power supplies, but not quite industry tolerance for our astronomical equipment here. So just be very careful of that. Now this is something that tends to confuse a lot of folks. When you're taking images through the telescope, there is natural curvature around the edges of the images through the glass. So the way to counteract that with a field flattener. Now this field flattener is a stellar view. It's also a focal reducer of 0.8x. And I did this just so I could get a little bit more around my images. Now, there's this funny thing called back focus when you're having to deal with all of this. To achieve that perfect flat field, you need to have the right math. And let me explain this to you as the best that I understand. Your focal reducer has a back focus of 55 millimeters. And that I got from the manufacturer. Now, 55 millimeters is what I need to equal up from here to here. So if I add in my camera, which is at like 6.5 millimeters, and I believe the filter wheel is like 20 20 millimeters and then I've got another little spacer here and another little spacer here and when these one two three four components add up together they need to be equal to or as close to equal to 55 as I can get and that math right there is what will give you a flat field all the way across your image so it is really important to pay attention to the number that this this um flattener gives you you know from the manufacturer that these components here equal up. Now you can add an off axis guide, um, an OAG in here, which will take up some of this other space. So you'll need to get other spacers that will equal this up. Now um, you can find them just about anywhere. ZWO includes several of them in the box when you purchase the camera. Or you can go to some other manufacturer and just look up spacers and make sure you get the threading right because you've got a 42 millimeter and I think a 40 eight millimeter as possibilities. So that's a little tricky to try to figure out, but I tend to call the vendors and I tell them, I'm starting here, I'm ending here, get me between the two. And they will tell me what I have and what I need, which is wonderful. At the back, and here is a flyover of the top. Now everything is connected. I've got two of those uh, giant Los Mondi bars which are really nice because so I needed to find a way to organize everything. 
You can see everything is connected here with two Los Mondi bars. I believe they're 13 or 14 inches. And I needed a platform at the bottom, which you see those two little red high heels there. Those are our Prima Luce spacers, and they're really cool, and they're red. They match my color scheme, which is important to me. And I needed that elevation here because of my night crawler. I had this little, um, the dial. If I set this on the table, it would hit, and I didn't want that. I wanted this to be a complete unit, so I don't take this apart at all. It is uh, perfectly set up and balanced and just don't mess with it. All right, so let's go back up to the top here. I have another Lismondi bar that's probably 13, 14 inches. And everything here, this is uh, Velcroed on or double-sided taped on to the edge. And it's really sturdy. It's not going anywhere. And the power supply, the um, distribution is zip-tied on and taped on. And same with my Astro Zap heater here. He is double-sided tape on, but you can see there, these things are quite sturdy. They're not going anywhere. And I added an extra piece of Velcro tape on here just to make sure there wasn't any flex because this is a little wobbly only because it's with Velcro and I can rip this whole thing off and swap it out with another one if I need be. But if you look up here at, I needed a handle just to help me carry things, but with it mounted down on the Lismondi bar, there was no clearance for me to get my hand under here. So what I did is I found these little risers and I got these from ADM and they are their little riser bars and they're made out of an airplane grade aluminum. They are super light, take up almost no space and inexpensive. Uh, he's selling them for about $5 for, uh, it's, I believe it was $5 each, which is in this sport, I'll tell you what, it's cheap and well worth it. And I've got a, a screw that's running all the way down from the top down to my rings. Now, just to make sure I tested it multiple times before I cranked down on that screw so I wouldn't accidentally crack my carbon fiber tube here. So I do have a couple washers between here just to fill up the space that, you know, cause I couldn't find the exact screw length that I needed. So the washers worked out really, really well. So this is my telescope. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe and like below. I appreciate all of you. This is Amy Astro. Till next time, I'm wishing you all a wonderful and joyous holiday season and many clear skies.